Welcome everybody here at JFD Brokers uh, to our next webinar um, with the topic human versus machine, who is the better trading? I think it's a quite interesting question and uh, we will bring some light on that question during that webinar and additionally to the whole process of um, how to, to get algos running um, Finally, yeah, today is the 6th of um, December 2017, 7 p.m. As usual, the only difference is we are one day earlier. Normally, the English one is on Thursday, but uh, this week it's on Wednesday. Okay, uh, my name, by the way, is uh, Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski. And uh, just um, that you know, you can directly call me Stefan if you want to get in touch with me via email. You see my email address here listed already on the first slide, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. Uh, so if you have additional questions, any remarks, uh, additional wishes, no problem. Just get in touch with me. The other thing is that um, the slides, uh, they are already ready for download. So via your go to webinar control panel, you can directly have access to those slides. There's a PDF, PDF document. Um, so if you like, simply uh, download uh, that file as well. Good. Um, two preview, two uh, remarks uh, in front of my talk. <clears throat> One is um, what I talk here today is exactly the same I have done on the world of trading. There it has been a seminar talk uh, for interested traders. Um, so maybe um, if somebody has been within the talk, it will be exactly the same one, uh, only in English now. <laughs> That's the main difference. And the other thing, <clears throat> I just want to mention it, um, it's more or less a review of what I have done over the last couple of years. Or if you see slides later, you will say, okay, that uh, was already a topic three months ago. And this one five months ago, you're right. Um, so it's a summary of a lot of talks uh, during the last couple of months. Um, but this one is more the general overview. But Anyhow, if you like, just um, when you want to have some further details about specific strategies, I will mention here only briefly, uh, then go to that website here. That's a JFD uh, YouTube website, and that's exactly what you might uh, press in Google to find that page here. And there you have all the, uh, the older uh, webinar recordings and uh, you will see strategies like price action strategy and so on and so forth, uh, gap close, uh, for example, uh, and uh, predictive power of indicators and so on. So um, you have access to all those uh, previous webinars, of, of course, and um, then you uh, will find more details. The other remark, as always, I have to show up that <clears throat> slide at least once during my talk. Our risk disclaimer, even if you don't talk in detail about specific trading strategies today, you always know <clears throat> whatever you do, whatever you trade, uh, you trade it simply on your own. Um, I think that's obvious and um, yeah, self-explaining. So I have to mention that uh, before I really start with my talk. Okay. So what are the real main topics when we talk about human versus machine, who is a better trader? Um, I want to start a little bit with a short comparison between human and machine, just from, from some principal guidelines. So it's really um, only a short table, but, um, but that we have a clear picture on what are the differences between human and machine. And then I will switch to something which may be funny for most of you uh, if I say trading totally abstracted. Um, that um, reflects a little bit of what is trading really. And you can simply write down one single line in order to describe trading and what it means if you trade. But you will see. Um, but then I want to, to, to guide you a little bit more from, from what we need 
if we talk about professional algorithm trading, um, what are the inputs we need, uh, what are the outputs, and so on. But that, for example, needs trading strategies, and I will briefly show you how I personally come from a trading idea to a trading strategy, and uh, finally to something which is really traded automatically. And of course, and that's one sentence I um, uh, I repeat that sentence on in webinars, in seminars, and especially on uh, such an event like World of Trading. Uh, there are hundreds of talks. Traders talk about trading, um, but one thing you should always keep in mind: if somebody is talking about trading, then he should be able to show his track record, his account, and that's all which finally counts. Just ask anybody who talks about trading, um, has brilliant ideas, show me your results, and that's all. And I really recommend to do that because there are lots of people talking, 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 but it's a good show. But what, fin but, uh, what finally counts yeah, is a track record. And of course, I will share those track records here with you. Um, and finally, we go back to our uh, opening question. Who is a better trader? And let's start with that. Um, who is a better trader? Just uh, give me some, some, some comments from, from your end. Just write down in uh, the question area of, um, of the GoToWebinar control panel, who's a better trader, human or the machine? And um, just uh, to, to have uh, some view on who is listening here, and maybe you have some, some mind already uh, right now. Um, so I will have a look um, to that. And uh, in a few minutes, I will come with that result here uh, as a quick questionnaire here. But let's see, uh, what's your opinion? But and finally, of course, I will share my opinion uh, on my final slide with you as well. Okay. So if you talk about algorithm, algorithmic trading or uh, in general about uh, the, the algo world, I just want to share with you some highlights from the last two, two decades. And it's only really some, some remarks, a uh, little bit related to trading, but not all. Um, just that we have a feeling of what is possible today with computer. So first point here, um, self-driving cars. They are really close to market introduction. And you may state, okay, um, maybe only in one year, maybe in five years, I don't know exactly. But in principle, it's already shown that cars are able to drive by their own and that they can do that job quite well. And it's an amazing task, uh, the, the overall complex the complexity is huge and um, yeah to to have uh, the computers driving cars i think that's remarkable but even if we go back or 20 years ago um, there has been already the first um, chess computer called deep blue um, which won against gary kasparov um, who has been the world champion at that time um, under real conditions and Finally, the computer won that game. Uh, it's amazing. It's 20 years ago, and um, maybe you know chess in, in more detail. It's not the easiest game. So it's remarkable what has been already possible 20 years ago. Um, and just one number out of that uh, uh, deep blue computer. Um, it's um, amazing that that computer was able to, to investigate one 100 million, um, let's let's call it settings. I'm not sure how you call it really in chess. Uh, and in, in order to give it a number, how good uh, that specific situation is. And um, so it was 100 million per second, an amazing number. And this year, um, there was a breakthrough as well. That was another game, uh, even more complex uh, in terms of, of um, situations and uh, the, the overall impact. That is uh, the, the, the game called Go. Uh, it looks even easier than chess, but uh, it's not uh, easier. And this year, 
yeah, the the world champion Ki G, or however you pronounce that name, um, yeah, loses against the computer program AlphaGo from Google. And what's even more amazing, that the further development of that uh, algo uh, called AlphaGo Zero <clears throat> was able to to be even better. And the input for that computer has been just the rules of the game and nothing else. So the, the training of that algorithm was simply done by the, by the algorithm itself. So simply by playing against um, itself, that program was able to be, become the best player. And the input has just been the rules. Think about trading. The rules of trading are really easy. But now think about those kind of computers. What might happen if um, they um, start trading? And finally, just as an example from, from our daily life, um, you, you all know that if you visit Facebook, Google, or Amazon, something like that, uh, so you get so-called product placements. And honestly, they fit the interest of the user quite well. At least um, what I get here, if I um, go to those websites, it's not that bad. And what's behind? Simply learning algorithms. And uh, finally, that is called deep learning. It's getting out of the data of really huge and big data rules. And yeah, you show up with what you are doing in the internet and they know what they should place as advertisement in front of you. It's amazing that you can get those rules. Um, and, um, and finally, all is about what's called deep learning. OK, so uh, in between, um, I see the results uh, of, of you um, saying who's a better trader, human or machine. And honestly, it's a 50-50. So half of you is uh, about uh, for the human and the other half is uh, for the machine. Let's see. Good. But now let's turn the questions the other way around. Who is a better trader? Are there any reasons why machines should be worse? Let's ask this way, um, because they can learn so many things uh, as, as presented in my last slide, they can drive cars. And indeed, it's not straightforward to say why machines should be um, the, the, the worst trader. Let's start with the advantages of the machine. Of course, speed, no question. Um, computer can run extremely fast and can do jobs in, in, in milliseconds, uh, what would take humans uh, even hours. So speed is an, a big advantage. Precision, of course. Um, it's calculating always right, at least as long as, long as the code is uh, uh, not buggy. And finally, of course, the machine is absolutely emotionless. So there are no emotions. It's doing its job. And um, yeah, if the computer is trading, the computer would not even finally care about losses. Um, it, of course, those losses are your losses finally, but the computer is without any emotions. And of course, the computer is able to run 24 seven. So um, anytime, without any stop, uh, only maybe if Microsoft is updating um, the operating system uh, and then you get a reboot. But anyhow, that is a different story. On the human side, we have two big advantages as well. And I, am, I will finally come to those two uh, on my final slide again, because I think they are extremely mighty. One thing is that the human is able to, to have something what we, what we call uh, intuition. Um, this is something you may say, OK, that's learning as well. You're right. It's something like an educated guess. If you come to a new situation, you might even think about trading, 
which has never been there before, then the human is able to come to a conclusion extremely fast. So that would be not that easy for the computer because we can draw conclusions um, with um, less information and uh, without big experience of the specific topic or the specific new situation. So that is one uh, big advantage of the human. And the other one, um, I simply meant, uh, um, wrote down he here, creativity. What do I mean? I do not mean uh, that uh, humans are able to, to uh, paint nice pictures like Mona Lisa or something like that. No, what I mean here is that we can come with totally new ideas. And that is a mighty tool as well. Uh, even if you think about trading strategies, yeah, um, there might be really a, a, a fantastic new idea uh, all of a sudden, and then we do it. Our disadvantage, is, um, of course, is psychology. Uh, so we have emotions. We come under stress if we see losses, uh, and even if we have uh, several trades in a row being loser trades, that's uh, a big disadvantage for us and we do mistakes I, I do mistakes of course um, I always remember a trade when I was about to open a trade 0.01 lot and uh, I opened this trade with one lot um, and uh, that account was definitely not really able to do it um, but those mistakes might happen and we are extremely slow. Um, so if we see something new on the screen uh, in order to react, it takes us a really long time. On the computer side, hmm, honestly, the real disadvantage, disadvantages I don't see, but up to now, and that now may not be very long in the future, but there still is an input necessary, and that input comes from the human. It's the idea, it's the code, a um, lot of uh, input things still coming from the human. Let's keep the table in mind and uh, in order to finally answer that question, who's the better trader? As I mentioned, what is trading in a nutshell? Hmm. Now, just look to that that equation. It's um, it's funny to write down trading in such an equation, but honestly, that's what trading is. We have something, in this case, it's our brain, and that brain comes to conclusions, makes decisions. And for a specific underlying, those conclusions are simply only three different states, like long, short, or flat. Flat even means do nothing. And even saying long may say, okay, I open a long position, and later I say short, then that me would mean close my long position, and finally a second short comes, then I really short, something like that. And there are inputs for those kind of decisions. So it's finally, it's just a function of the inputs which come to the decision long, short, flat. You may state, hey, and what's about, what about um, buy limit orders, buy stop orders, and something like that. Mm -hmm. If our time is here, let's say milliseconds or even microseconds, then what does it mean if you say buy stop at a certain level? It is only a conditional decision. You do it to right now that that uh, condition to say, okay, if the price is at the level of 1.835, then I open a long trade. It's nothing hidden in that uh, equation here. Um, it's simply that you say, if price hits a specific level, then you open your long trade. Um, you can even wait until the situation really comes and then we uh, write down the equation once again and come to the same conclusion. So um, those things like like limit uh, orders or uh, stop orders um, are within that equation as well. But what are the inputs? Of course, uh, the inputs for that kind of decision, and even if you do discretionary trading and do your decisions out of the chart, you do exactly the same here. 
um, you look to the time and maybe to the time history, to, so to the price history of the specific underlying you you might want to trade, and um, that is mentioned with the, with the X here. Uh, that's the price history, maybe 100 bars, maybe even 100,000 bars, whatever. And you may use in your charts indicators, and uh, I call them here simply um, uh, Y. Um, and the reason is, and I put it in brackets, because indicators, they don't have any new information. Uh, indicators are simply um, another equation out of the price history, and then you come to, for example, an EMA value. Or let's go for an SMA value, then it's just uh, maybe SMA 20 means the yeah, averaging of the last 20 candles. So indicators in general don't have any additional information which is already in the price hits history itself. It's only uh, that we, we we present those that price history in a different way, like any indicator. But there are additional inputs in that equation. Maybe simply some news. And with news, I mean um, every news. You, you may read newspapers or you look to specific websites um, or Reuters or whatever um, input you get as news, they have an impact on your trading decision. You may use fundamental data as well. Uh, and with fundamental, I not even mean um, like like um, if you describe a specific company and you look to the fundamental data of that company, now it might even be a region or a political situation um, of, a, of a specific country, whatever. So those input you have in your mind as well. And of course, within that trading decision we have to do here, we, um, we look to trading costs and um, anything else. Finally, what we do else is, <clears throat> of course, we do money management for our trading activities, but that is in that equation uh, as well. So a lot of input, and finally, it's only three different states, like long, short, flat. And now to what means trading? Make that decision in each millisecond, and that's all. And what we try to do is, yeah, of course, we try to generate profits. So that's that's the target of uh, that um, equation to to gain profits. Finally, it's funny if you look for trading simply like uh, such an equation. Of course, I don't have an equation like like uh, three times x plus two times y minus uh, z. Uh, and then let's look whether we have long, short or flat. But nevertheless, that's trading. And if you look at trading from that perspective, of course, mm, the computer has a big advantage uh, over the human. But if we go further down the road, uh, we want to have yeah, something which really trades by its own in our personal account. And so what we do we need if we want to come to that target? So what is really professional algo trading? And there are three steps involved. <clears throat> of course, first, we need a good algorithm, a good trading strategy. We have to develop that kind of strategy. We have to optimize uh, the strategy, look for the, the, the important key figures. Uh, we need specific inputs like indicators, whatever. Whatever you have in mind, uh, we need those. And we have to come to a real st trading strategy, which has a fixed set of rules uh, so that um, Every decision is clear um, and uh, that we can can code something or we can train the computer to do exactly what we have in mind with our kind of strategy. Next step now is the implementation of that strategy. And I personally go always away via expert advisors. Expert advisors <clears throat> are uh, simply a little bit software uh, once again. Um, that software runs on MT4 or MT5, um, my favorite pl uh, trading platform. And 
So within my trading account, something, and that something is that piece of software, is now doing the implementation of my trading strategy. It looks to the prices, price changes, and is opening the trades, closing the trades, um, moving around, stop losses, take profits, whatever is needed. And so the, that expert advisor is really managing all the trades and is executing all the trades, um, whether it's uh, market orders or buy stop orders, whatever. Um, that is a piece of software we need to implement our strategy. I personally recommend always uh, not to, to run those expert advisors on your private computer at home. Um, I prefer so-called VPS, uh, that stands for a virtual private server. That is something that's more or less a computer you, you can rent in a, in a, a computer farm. And then you have um, such a computer remote and that computer is much more uh, suitable for those activities like automatic trading than your private computer at home, simply because of two reasons. One is um, that uh, um, at home you might lose your internet uh, connection or even um, <clears throat> um, the electricity goes down, whatever happens. Uh, and those computer farms, they are much more protected uh, against uh, those uh, circumstances uh, than you can do at home. And the best is that you do that directly with your broker. Um, so your broker, in this case, JFD, or in my case, is uh, offering such a service, and then you get access to um, computer farms which know what I, you are doing. So they know uh, that on Tuesday, when Microsoft is doing uh, maybe updates, uh, that they will not run automatically and reboot the computer and um, you have to restart your MT4. So mm, they know what they are doing. So those are um, quite well. Finally, what you need if you go for algo trading, as for every trading, you need a good broker. And of course, my choice here is uh, JFD. But uh, that's something I go a little bit more uh, in depth uh, later. Not today. Uh, I think that will be a webinar in January. But anyhow, so those three steps we need. Algorithms, expert advisors, and the final execution on a virtual private server. And then you have all the inputs for professional algo trading. Today, I will focus a little bit more on the development of uh, the algorithms um, that you have to code. Expert advisors, of course, you know, and uh, the last step is just something to be done. It's not, uh, uh, that's not really a big deal. Um, okay, but how do we come to a trading strategy in order to go the complete uh, road down? So my starting point is always what I call an observation in the chart or simply some, some general thoughts about trading. So I look, of course, still I look personally to, to, to charts and um, not only just coding algorithms um, because my ideas, they stem from charts, of course, because I see something and I think, hey, that looks like a rule. Um, just a, a quick example, I see two, uh, green candles followed by one red and then I think I know what happens next. That's not um, a real example. It's just to, to tell you how, how ideas um, are, gener are generated. It's really looking to charts. It's specific actions I see and then it's the most important next step. We have an idea of what comes typically next after whatever indicator uh, observation you have, then we need a proof of our idea. And that can only be done statistically with historical prices. What we finally need is not an observation like, okay, three times it was positive and scrolling a little bit uh, um, in the chart and maybe we see a force example and then we say, okay, good, <clears throat> tomorrow I trade that idea. No, <clears throat> we need a proof 
that we have a real edge, that we have a real probability advantage. And that thing has to be proven maybe by Excel, maybe by other computer programs. Um, I uh, do both. <clears throat> Um, first um, proof of concept is uh, in most cases just Excel and uh, then I switch to C programming simply because of speed and I'll show you an, an example later. Only if you have such an edge we can later start trading and that sentence is true for, for any kind of trading strategy even if you do discretionary trading. You should know that you have an advantage with exactly what you are doing. And only if, if you have a proof, then go that road. What we see there, we need trading rules and they must be absolutely clear, 100% um, without any uh, question mark. And minimum criteria are simply that you we need an entry criteria for our open of a trade or pending order or whatever. Uh, so we need an, <clears throat> a clear entry out of those rules. We need a clear exit because every trade has to come to an end. Um, we don't want to have um, trades running for, for years. So we need an exit. Of course, we need a methodology for calculating our position size. Um, because that's what we have to do. We, we need to know 0.0s, 2, 1 lot, 3 lots, whatever. <clears throat> and no trade without stop loss. And the last two points, uh, they depend on each other because if we don't have a stop loss, we are not able to calculate our position size because we are not able to calculate our risk. So that's extremely important. And I know lots of people are still trading without stop losses. And uh, I will never do it. Um, only if I have in mind um, that I can lose a lot of money. For example, um, if I buy one lot ducks, uh, let's say today, uh, ducks at about 13,000 points, of course, I don't need a stop loss if I'm willing, finally, um, to have a potential uh, loss of 13,000 uh, euros. Uh, in that case, I don't need a stop loss, of course, but um, I don't think that is uh, what you have in mind if you want to trade the DAX. Do we need a stop? Uh, do we need to take profit? Mm, not really, because um, most strategies I develop, they have take profits, but uh, sometimes not. As long as I have an exit criteria, I can even go for trades without take profit. If I know when that that trade should come to an end, then it will be um, exit um, by another criteria. Just an example, uh, think about an EMA following strategy. We open a trade um, when um, first time uh, the price crosses uh, the EMA from below uh, to above, and then we open our long trade for that uh, underlying. And maybe our our exit criteria is to simply that we wait um, until once again we cross uh, the EMA, and um, that might be our exit. Uh, so in this case, we don't need to take profit, but I would not open the trade without a stop loss. Um, even if I have such an exit criteria. So that's something definitely we need when we talk about trading strategies, There's some basic rules how to come to those. A quick example here, um, just um, power candles. I think that was a webinar uh, three, four, five months ago uh, that would develop a, a complete strategy out of power candles. But what do I mean? Power candles are those huge candles within the chart. Uh, something like here, that green one. And the original question was, is there a typical price action after such a power candle? So is there something which repeats um, something maybe like, like indicated here by my red line? And indeed, what we found out was, hey, yeah, we can see something like that in the moment after such a power candle. So that was a brilliant um, base strategy to, to open trades after uh, such power candles. And um, 
of course, we need that proof, uh, that proof of concept that we have such a typical price action um, after the occurrence of such a power candle. But just one ex question you, ha uh, uh, you have to answer. When do you talk about um, power candles? So we need a minimum size, for example, of uh, such a candle in order to say, okay, now we have it. Uh, and now we know what to do. So that's just one example um, of potential trading strategies. Just another example here, open range breakout strategies um, like uh, here in that uh, chart. So um, breakout strategies typically one like uh, you have two different points in time, in this case here midnight and eight o'clock. And uh, within that time, uh, frame or time uh, period, uh, then you look for the highest values, the maximum and the minimum. So that creates um, a range within that chart. And now you place two orders, one by stop order uh, at the upper end and the sell stop order at the lower end. And those orders typically uh, are OCO. That means one cancels the other. If the one is uh, triggered, then okay, we like here, then you delete, you cancel your uh, buy stop order. And in my example, as always, if somebody is presenting a strategy, everything works 100%. Um, price goes down and uh, hits my target here um, at the end of that error here. And yeah, that's a breakout strategy. Um, but of course, once again, that kind of strategy has degrees of freedom. In this case, minimum three degrees of freedom. And when I talk about degrees of freedom, that uh, sounds a little bit more uh, mathematical, or uh, but it's think about parameters like like EMA periods. Uh, Two hundred thirty-eight might be your EMA period. Um, you are in favor. Anyhow, so here the parameters or the degrees of freedom are range start time in that example uh, midnight, range end time eight o'clock, and finally what we need is something like a take profit multiplier, um, or simply call it risk reward ratio. Within that list, you might miss. Hey, where's the stop loss? Yeah, the stop loss is given by the range itself. So stop loss is always the opposite side. So the stop loss is given. Um, when it comes to trading, we would calculate uh, for, for example, for, for risk for a fixed number of, of euros, would calculate the position size, and then in order to get our take profit value here, we multiply that distance. The the height of our gray box uh, with a, some certain factor, that multiplier. In my case, that risk reward ratio was simply one. But the question is, when we develop such a strategy, hey, um, what are the best um, times? Is it midnight to eight? Is it one o'clock to three o'clock or whatever? And in order to answer that question, we have to ask first another question. And that is a question, um, oh, I will come to that in a, sec in a minute, but so um, uh, I, I missed, uh, well, I messed up the, the order of the slides anyhow. So if we want to do something like that, um, then and in order to optimize the strategy, first we need is uh, historical price data. And you see some different sources here I personally use. And uh, those are Yahoo Finance for D1 data, Stock for D1, His data for smaller timeframes, and Dukas Copy again for uh, smaller timeframes. Those um, sources are all free, so you don't have to pay for the data. Um, and that's what we need in order to, to um, investigate our specific strategy. Now the question is, hey, um, how to do it? How can we optimize our strategy? How can we find our parameters? Like 
range, start time, range, end time, or in the, the other example, like power candles, the minimum size of, of, uh, of a candle, uh, which we now name uh, a power candle. You can do a lot of things already in Excel. In Excel. Uh, and what you have to do then is you have to vary the different parameters and see and then have a look to the results. That's of course possible for D1 and maybe sometimes even down to H1, but it's getting more and more complicated because the amount of data. If you are at H1 or even smaller time frames, then you need something else. You cannot manage that any longer in Excel, at least not if you want to have a look to um, long price histories like, for example, 10 years or even if you go a few years, then you have simply too much data. And what I do then is I write uh, my own C programs because they can do that kind of calculation extremely fast. And uh, compared, for example, to Excel or even to backtesting in MT4, it's about 100,000 times uh, faster. And I'll show you an example uh, later. But still there is one question. What should I optimize? You may answer immediately, okay, uh, highest profit, I want profits. Yeah, but is profit everything? Uh, there are other aspects, like for example, drawdowns. And um, if you have visited a lot of webinars during the last couple of months, you know that slide. Um, that is simply the question, what equity here, if, the, if you have the choice, which one is the best of those four? And maybe you tend to say directly, hey, it's the right one, generating the highest profits. No. For my favorite here is equity number two, so the, the more brown one here uh, where my cursor is now. And what is the criteria? Um, the equity goes north, which is good. Um, so it has a decent slope, good, but it has more or less no drawdown. So the, the movements to the south, like here in the red one, uh, they are even much more pronounced uh, and not pronounced in, in the brown one here. So it's a combination of slope, so getting profits. The slope of the equity has to do with how much euro do I earn per trade per day per whatever unit but on the other hand i want to have um, the smallest possible drawdowns and it's both it's a combination and finally i put something else um, into that equation because i personally like equities which are really straight so the linearity of such an uh, um, equity uh, should be um, very good or mathematically, you can use what is called R square. Um, that, that's a, a measure uh, to, to, to get a number for, for that linearity. And the one is a perfect um, straight line. And the zero would mean it's more um, simply noise. So, and now we, we know how to optimize the strategy. We need three key figures. We calculate the maximum drawdown. We calculate the equity of uh, the slope of the equity and that what's called R square, that's the linearity. And if you simply have the following three sentences in mind, like I want minimum drawdown, highest slope, and a linearity close to one, you can directly come to the conclusions I write down that equation. Maximum drawdown divided by slope divided by R square, and that number should be positive and the smallest what's possible. So if you minimize that number, uh, but of course it must be a positive number, otherwise you have a losing a strategy, then you are done. So that is my personal key figure in order to optimize any strategy because that combines highest slope, generating profits, lowest maximum drawdown, and a good linearity. That's how I do it. And 
Uh, that key figure um, in, in Excel sheets, I call that key figure sometimes opti. And uh, just to have an example here, uh, you might remember that we have had a strategy in in um, a mean reversion strategy. We have generated uh, Excel sheets like this that we get uh, an equity here, and all of our trading rules are um, coded into that Excel sheet. And then we have the possibility to change parameters, like for example, the EMA period. And of course it changes here the equity, but you see, it's not that huge change if I come from one EMA value to another EMA value, which is good. And that is uh, another topic on my, my previous slide, but um, I will come to that. So we are able to calculate equities, for example, here in Excel, and we have those key figures like my opti, and opti is exactly that equation I wrote down last. So we can do things in Excel, and we have to avoid over optimization. And there are three, three typical uh, methods I use here, and one is called the so called neighborhood analysis in the parameter space. Sounds really complicated, but it's quite easy. Think about you have a strategy. Um, running with an EMA and you get super results with an EMA of 200 and now you change to 201 the EMA period from 200 to 201 and your equity goes down what would you do would you trust that trading strategy I personally would say no and that is what I call neighborhood analysis so we have a parameter in my case now this EMA and if we go to the right, if we go to the left, and my equity ruins, then I would say don't go for that. And um, that avoids over-optimization. And uh, another methodology, I will come to that in my next slide, that is a walk-forward methodology. Um, I will explain it uh, uh, in a second. And the third one is that you simply use a small variation noise of your price data. So if you add a little bit noise to your your to the real price data and your equity directly goes down, so you, your your slope uh, uh, may even become negative, um, then the uh, alarm bells uh, should ring um, because that is a sign for over optimization. That walk forward methodology works uh, like the following. Um, and that is a good methodology in order to, to, to get uh, experience with your trading strategy. So the chart here is nothing I want to trade. So I don't talk about resistance lines or triangles within the chart. It's not only illustrating what I'm doing here. We have here 10 years of price history. And um, finally, the, the, the strategy may run on, on H1 so that you don't would see any, any candle in detail here. But the, the point how to, to uh, come to a trading strategy or to, to optimize a trading strategy and know that you don't over-optimize uh, yourself, that is done with that illustration here. So think about, we have that green box uh, that represents maybe two years uh, in, in time frame, And within that time frame, within that, those two years, which are far in the past from today's perspective, you do that optimization. And you come to your, your parameters for your specific trading strategy. And you know, those are good within the green box. And what you do now is you apply those parameters in the now coming future and that is represented by the red box here so that part of data has not been part of your optimization and you apply your rules now in that red box so you do trading in the future and that now you can do iteratively here through the complete history of data you have and finally you come here to the end and now we do exactly what we have done already 100 times uh, uh, within the, the complete uh, historical data uh, space. We do it now live tomorrow in our real account. But the good thing is we have done that kind of, let's call it experiment already in the past. And if we know that we get good results there, 
it's no guarantee that we get good results in the future as well, but at least we know what we are doing and that is good. So that is a so-called walk forward methodology and um, that you have a short impression of when I talk about optimiza uh, optimization of strategies and involving computers in calculating equities. Just a quick example that you can see a little bit of what's possible in terms of speed investigating trading strategies. So there will not happen much now on my screen, but only that you see a little bit what's possible with today's computer power. What we will do here, I will start a program and that um, computer program will first read 10 years price history of seven underlyings. So that means for each underlying, I get close to 100,000 candles price history um, for seven underlyings, everything with euro in this case. And then there's a trading strategy and I calculate equities according to my trading rules. Equities for a given parameter set. And if I start now that um, piece of software here, first it's reading the data, uh, reading, reading, reading. And now every line you see here, um, and I don't know whether you can see it directly, but um, I think you don't get it uh, directly because it's uh, extremely small, uh, extremely fast. But I can tell you the number. For 10 years price history, seven underlyings, I can calculate 120 equities per second. Every equity is is a sequence of up to 100,000 trades. Everything is calculated with risk management and so on. So even on my personal computer, I can calculate 120 equities per second for 10 years price history on H1 uh, price data. So you, you may get an impression of what's possible and you may get an impression of what other even um, real big companies uh, which have not only a single computer, they may have 1,000 computers doing that kind of task, what they are able to do. So the, the, the power, the, the, the speed is extremely fast. So um, it's 120 equities per second, seven underlyings for 10 years price history. Why is it that fast? Um, the reason is why, because I, I code everything in uh, in C and uh, that computer language C is simply extremely fast. And I can do methodologies like walk forward, adding noise, everything in order to come to trading strategies, which are not over optimized. And uh, you see a lot of exa uh, samples uh, during the last uh, webinars, uh, therefore I refer refer to to those recordings if you want to learn more about the methodologies open range breakouts price action uh, mean reversion power candles breakouts whatever so there have been a um, lot of examples and that's exactly of how i do my development that means i will want to show you first once again that slide here um, developing the algorithm checking my trading idea whether it is worse to optimize then optimize my trading strategy then with the help of peter milner in austria uh, coding the expert advisor um, which is then running on a vps uh, within mt4 in order to to really trade my strategy in my account and now we are at the topic account um, because I promised you should always ask people talking about trading, please show me your track record. And um, of course I do it. Um, be, yeah. And I have here in the slides just a, a few examples and um, the, the pictures here are um, two or three week, weeks old. Uh, as I mentioned, it was a word of trading, but 
I will switch now to what's really live. Uh, so I can go here for the real results. And um, I share those information honest. That means I show the bad one as well. And let's start here. So the first one, brilliant. Uh, there was that six month, no, uh, eight months uh, history now, um, developing brilliant, um, close to 20% uh, plus, which is a really fair number, a good number uh, within the time frame. But you see, on the other hand, um, a loser with um, maybe eight eight percent right now, um, but that's trading. So it's one uh, one strategy, one, two. But let's go quickly through that you see really what's possible with algo trading. And um, unfortunately, I cannot compare it to hundreds of uh, uh, maybe accounts who are trading uh, discretionary to simply ask uh, or to answer the, the, the opening question, who's the better trading trader uh, by statistics. I can only show my statistic and uh, that's uh, what you see here. So we have different kind of strategies, um, strategies which are more or less uh, at zero level, like uh, three and four. But here we have quite positive numbers, uh, five and six, uh, really developing a great. Um, that uh, six, by the way, for example, is a gold breakout strategy. Strategies which have a good increase, then a flat situation, okay, but still fair positive, or just being on break even level uh, like this one here. Having a good sequence upwards, sequence downwards, but still okay. Or other examples like you see here. And the last developing uh, variance, extremely po uh, positive. Even those which have uh, such a drawdown here at the very beginning of opening that uh, kind of strategy. You see the straight recovery here uh, within two months as expected for that strategy behaving extremely well. So you see lots of additional um, good examples uh, here and finally uh, one flat example here as well. So as always drawdowns they belong um, to the trading activities. We know that and we know what we can expect from those kind of strategies. So it's all examples, all the 20 strategies, really different strategies. A few of them are similar to each other, um, but the uh, basic concept is always uh, something different. Um, and everything is running 100% automatically, running by an expert advisor, uh, running on such a VPS. So that's my, that's that are my results here um, in accounts. And yeah, let's come back to our opening question. Who is a better trader? So my personal answer is simply machine. Um, I only know numbers from what I read in the internet. Um, there are rules like um, 90, 90, 90. Um, that 90, 90, 90 <clears throat> stands for 90% of traders are losing 90% of their money within 90 days. That sentence is uh, not for me. <clears throat> it's uh, something out of the internet. Other um, get numbers like uh, only 20% of traders uh, gain profits. So that's only what I can compare to here. Uh, I have no statistics about uh, real results. <clears throat> I see my results, I know what they are doing, and um, therefore my answer is clearly uh, the machine is a better trader. Um, is there any guarantee for future profits? Of course not. Um, as, no, as in every case, when you talk about trading, there are no guarantees. Um, so the good thing is, if you do things like walk forward methodology, we have self-adapting strategies. So they they look to the history and uh, adapt themselves. So they change parameters, which is good. So they are not static, they are dynamically. 
And still, if you go for that question, human versus machine, still we need the human to code um, whatever, the Excel sheet, uh, the expert advisor, um, or the C program. So still the, the human, they give the input and the computer is helping in the process of optimization and is doing the execution finally. But still, I want to repeat the sentence we have had more or less at the beginning, that we should not underestimate um, the creativity of humans. We, we may bring up new ideas, new thoughts, really creative one, which more or less create a new word. And, and that sentence is not really meaning uh, that we get new, uh, a second word, a second earth. No, it's we can develop things no one has thought about before and that's that's a feature of a human which is um, absolutely uh, fantastic and therefore still the human will play um, yeah a, a big um, they will have the humans will have a big impact on trading uh, even for the next couple of decades I got a question here. Um, is the webinar archived? Yes, of course. Um, uh, tomorrow uh, around uh, 10 o'clock, for example, you will find uh, the recordings of the webinar uh, on the YouTube channel of JFT Brokers. So as I sh uh, showed previously, so it's exactly here, uh, that web page, uh, JFT Brokers. So you, you, you press Google, um, JFT brokers, then you come in directly here to that um, web page, and you see, for example, the German one here uh, yesterday webinar, same topic but in German. Uh, anyhow, um, so there you find the archive and uh, the recordings of those webinars. I hope you enjoyed even a webinar like this one here. It's a more general overview of um, professional algo trading. And um, yeah, with my personal answer to the question, who's a better trader? That's for now. I hope you enjoyed. See you in two weeks. Uh, we have a next uh, webinar. Then we come back with, to, to a new trading strategy. We'll, we will develop a new one within that webinar. And uh, hopefully I'll see you. In two weeks, any questions? Um, just send me an email here to uh, s. Friedrichowski at JFT Brokers, um, and then you can get in touch with me personally. Just uh, because I see there is one additional question: uh, Do you sell signals? Uh, no, I don't uh, sell uh, signals. But um, at JFD, they work hard uh, in order to to come with some very cool solutions for you uh, that you can follow those kind of strategies but there's one way you can do it already today if you uh, google for jfd welts um, then you will direct will be directed uh, to to a new web page from jfd um, which is a, a sub department uh, which is really called jfd welts and uh, there you find the first offer uh, that is a trading basket strategy so the it's really that uh, name basket strategy um, so you can open an account and then that kind of strategy runs directly on your account um, you find that directly uh, looking for JFD welts and then go for the basket uh, strategy okay that's for now I hope you enjoy and um, yeah have a nice evening Bye-bye.